Hello, I will talk about the two flavor swinger model at final temperature and in the delta regime, which is a project that I'm working on together with Dr. Wolfgang Bittenholz and Dr. Ivan Heap. So, first of all, I would like to discuss some important features about QCD. QCD is the theory for the strong interaction, and its Lagrangian is given by this expression here. And since at low energy level the coupling becomes large, one cannot use perturbation theory and instead a non perturbative approach is required, for instance, lattice simulations or an effective field theory. Also, due to the fact that we are interested in the low energy level, we only consider those quark masses that are much smaller than lambda QCD, which is the energy scale of the theory, and this leads us to take into account only the U and the quarks. Now, in order to build effective field theory, we have to analyze the chiral symmetry of QCD, so if we apply the chiral projection operators, we obtain the right-handed and left-handed fields, and the Lagrangian takes this form here, which has a global SUNFL times SUNFR symmetry, when the fermions are massless. However, this symmetry is spontaneously broken to SUNF, and as a consequence of the Goldstone theorem, n squared minus 1 massless Nambu Goldstone bosons appear. This quantity here, the expectation value of psi over psi, which is known as the chiral condensate, is a symmetry breaking order parameter, so if it is zero, there is no symmetry breaking. Now, when we consider fermions with masses slightly bigger than zero, the symmetry breaking is now explicit, and instead of massless Nambu Goldstone bosons, we have quasi Nambu Goldstone bosons. And for two flavors, then three quasi Nambu Goldstone bosons appear, and they can be related to the pion triplets, since they are the lightest hadrons in nature. And here I just mentioned that in the rest of the work we will consider degenerate fermion masses. Okay, so taking all of this into account, we can construct an effective theory known as chiral perturbation theory. For two massless flavors, the idea is to introduce a UX field written in terms of pion fields. Here of pi is known as the pi and decay constant and it makes the argument of the exponential dimensionless. Then we write an effective Lagrangian which has to have all the terms consistent with the SU2L times SU2R symmetry. However, that will lead us to an infinite amount of terms, but one can trunk it in powers of moment or in the numbers of derivatives. Now, if we consider the generate fermion mass different from zero, by adding this term to the Lagrangian, there is explicit symmetry breaking. And these coefficients here they are known as low energy constants or legs, and in infinite volume they obey this relation here. So, on the other hand, in finite volume there are several regimes to study chiral perturbation theory. In particular, we focus on the delta regime, where we consider an anisotropic volume of dimension L to the third times Lt, with L small or similar to 1 over the pi on mass, but with a large time extent compared to 1 over m pi. This regime was introduced by Lloyd Wheeler in 1987 and it has some important features. For example, due to the fact that we are dealing with a small space volume, in the chiral limit the pion does not become massless and instead there is a residual pion mass different from zero. Also, the small spatial size allows us to treat chiral perturbation theory in the delta regime as a quasi one dimensional field theory. And based on this, Hassenfratz and Niermeyer performed some analysis where they found that in four dimensions the residual pion mass has this approximate behavior. We can see that it should go as 1 over L to a third, and in two dimensions it should go as 1 over L. So, if one measures the residual pion mass for several L by using lattice simulations in two dimensions, one can verify this relation and extract the value of the pion decay constant, which by the way in two dimensions is dimensionless. And in principle, one can perform QCD simulations in two dimensions. However, that is often complicated, so it is useful to work with a simple model to test these analytic predictions and one simple model that is commonly used in the lattice community is the Schwinger model, which refers to quantum electrodynamics in two dimensions. It is used because it has common properties with QCD, for instance, confinement, chiral symmetry breaking, and topology. The Lagrangian is given by this expression here. You can see that the fermion mass has a positive sign together with the gauge term, and that all the indexes are in the lower part. That is because in the lattice framework one performs a big rotation, transforming the Minkowski spacetime into Euclidean spacetime. Also, one uses the Euclidean gamma matrices, and again, we are going to work with the generate fermions. So, for two massive flavors, two bosons appear, and they can be related to the eta prime, the pion from QCD. Unfortunately, in that case, there is no general solution for the dependence of these masses on them. Nevertheless, there have been several analytic approaches. In particular, we studied the approach made by Hosotani in the 90s. His idea is to map the Schwinger model onto a circle, imposing these boundary conditions on the fields, and then he applies a technique known as bosonization, and with that he reduces the Schwinger model to a quantum mechanical system of only one degree of freedom, governed by this differential equation here, 
that is valid when m is much smaller than mu, where mu is defined by this equation here. And here t is the Euclidean time extent, and is related to the temperature of the system by t equal to 1 over t. Also, delta alpha is a boundary condition parameter, and by taking it equal to zero, we obtain the finite temperature Schwinger model. So, now, if one calculates the ground state of this differential equation here, Hosotani found that by using these equations, one can determine the pion mass and the eta prime mass when m is much smaller than mu. And when the Fermi mass is equal to zero, we expect the pion to become massless and the eta prime to converge to mu. This is not an exact solution, but we still compute the numerical values by finding a self-consistent solution to this system of equations, and we compare the outcome with the results from lattice simulations. Okay, so, here I show the results of the pion mass and the eta prime mass for different fermion masses. We observed that only for small masses, the prediction by Hosotani agrees with the lattice results. We see that in both cases, the pion mass converges to zero and the eta prime mass converges to some value close to 0.4, which is compatible with its value in the chiral limit. Here I introduce this notation, Vita is defined as 1 over the squared coupling constant. And in the delta regime, we also measure the pion mass for different fermion masses. And close to the chiral limit, we see that the values diverge. So in order to extract the residual pion mass, we had to extrapolate the value by fitting a function of this form. Uh, we repeated this same procedure for several volumes by fixing LT equal to 64 and bearing L and with that we were able to verify the one overall relation of the residual pion mass that is predicted in the delta regime and this also allowed us to compute the value of f pi and we also verified that the result was independent from beta so we repeated everything for beta equal to 2 and 3 and as you can see the result is the same within errors in this table here we show the pion decay constant for the different betas that we used an average of these values yields 0.66 and well, to finish, as a cross-check, we determined the pi and decay constant by an independent method that consisted on using the witten veneziano formula, which for the Schwinger model has this expression here, where chi tq is the quenched topological susceptibility and f eta prime is the eta prime decay constant. In QCD, it's valid to take the eta prime decay constant equal to the pi and decay constant, but in the Schwinger model, the literature is not clear whether this relation holds. Still, we try to compute f pi by using this formula. Here we show the topological susceptibility as a function of the fermion mass, and in order to extrapolate its value to infinite m, we fit two different functions and obtain chi t as an average of the results of the fits. Now, with chi t quenched, com we computed f pi, and this yields a result of 0.42. But in the delta regime, we have we, we have this other result, so we see a discrepancy between both numbers. This discrepancy is something that we are trying to figure out, and to do so we are performing quenched simulations to obtain several values of chi t, and we also have to determine whether taking the eta prime decay constant equal to the pi decay constant is valid in the Schwinger model. And well, that is everything. Thank you.